Hello, everyone. Uh, good, good afternoon to you, I guess. Um, uh, so my name is uh, Titus Kurek. I'm a product manager at uh, Canonical, uh, the company that uh, produces Ubuntu as a Linux distribution. Uh, but uh, we're not only involved in Ubuntu, we do a lot of other interesting things in the data center space, in public clouds, in the edge, um, and one of them is uh, OpenStack as a career grade private cloud. But uh, before we talk about OpenStack uh, itself, I'm going to start uh, with the public clouds because this is where the journey actually begins. Because as you probably know, public clouds are, are increasing. You know, like uh, we are living in the era where public clouds are uh, all over around us. And there are more and more public cloud providers that uh, uh, start serving their services for the users. And, uh, you know, the actual number of workloads being run in public clouds is, is only increasing. So we're living in the era of public cloud. So why do we need a private cloud then, right? Uh, but uh, there is one problem with public clouds that every organization faces sooner or later. If you have a look on this uh, picture, this is a screenshot from one of my personal invoices from AWS for hosting some sample services. Uh, it becomes very obvious soon that public clouds actually charge for everything, right? So uh, in other words, they are expensive. Um, if you are running uh, your workloads uh, in a public cloud for a long period of time uh, at scale, it's going to cause a lot. So uh, public clouds are usually a very good answer for uh, small and medium-sized businesses who just have to run uh, some small number of workloads, maybe on demand, not 24 per seven, um, because they provide an immediate access to the infrastructure as a service offering. And, uh, you know, all of the integrated features, um, uh, pay as you go billing and, and stuff like that. So it, it's always a good answer at the beginning of your journey with the cloud to start with one of your public cloud providers. However, um, when a number of workloads in your environment is going to grow and uh, you're going to start running some production workloads in a cloud, then it quickly becomes evident that this approach with charging for everything with um, um, uh, the pricing that is being set by public cloud providers does not really scale and is not cost effective in the long term. It, it is, we, we can use an analogy here. So it, it is the same um, as with renting an office or owning an office. If, if you are a small or a medium sized business, you wouldn't probably invest uh, in an office. You would rather rent it, right? Uh, but over time, as the num as you, there are more and more employees um, in your company, and um, it, it costs you a lot every year to pay for the uh, rent tax, you would probably consider owning an office instead of renting it. So it's it's exactly the same with uh, clouds. So public clouds are very good at the beginning of the cloud journey, but as uh, they cost a lot over time this doesn't really scale and uh, organizations are considering a private cloud instead. So um, this is the reality of um, this diagram represents the reality of, of uh, many organizations nowadays. Like they are using uh, public clouds, most probably more than one uh, because uh, of being able to negotiate a better pricing or just for high availability purposes, we all so Google going down yesterday, right? Um, and we, as the company behind Ubuntu, fully support uh, leading public cloud providers so that organizations can run their Ubuntu workloads uh, with confidence in any of the available public clouds. What we propose 
as the next step, um, and this is when we come to a private cloud and OpenStack later on, or Charmed OpenStack, is um, a private cloud that is being run on premises uh, at, at the data center of the customer, where they can also run the same Ubuntu workloads with the same user experience, but not as an alternative to their existing public cloud infrastructure, but rather as an extension. So that, um, you know, we always uh, want to make sure that our customers run the workloads where it makes most of the sense from the economical point of view. So if, if they are running just a subset of the workloads, um, on demand, they are not run 24 per seven, they are not hosted 24 per seven. Um, and maybe they have some special requirements with regards to the underlying infrastructure. Sure, it may absolutely make sense to run them in a public cloud, but to run some massive workloads at scale um, in the long term, from the economical point of view, it makes more sense to run them in a private cloud. There is an evidence that private cloud are least expensive compared to the public clouds in the long term. And this kind of a triangle that we have here, we consider a multi-cloud and it really represents the reality of um, uh, how the infrastructure looks like nowadays in most of the organizations, right? Um, and uh, then the only issue to address is workloads orchestration in this multi-cloud uh, environment, which is a subject for a different conversation. Um, so let's move now to the private cloud. So um, when it comes to making uh, decisions about the choices for the, infra uh, for the infrastructure, like what kind of a platform am I going to use to implement my private cloud infrastructure, there are obviously multiple options on the table. There's uh, VMware uh, that has been available for a while uh, with a big success over years. Uh, there are some solutions that are available from the public cloud providers as a kind of an extension so that they, run, they can run the same services uh, on-prem and there are other technologies such as OpenStack, for example. So why did we choose OpenStack as our platform for private cloud implementation? So having a look on the following uh, chart and it comes from statista.com, uh, it is evident that uh, VMware um, adoption is actually decreasing. Uh, as I said, VMware celebrated success over years, but because of their um, expansion pricing structure for their licenses and subscriptions. A lot of users are now moving out from VMware to other um, cloud technologies. As I said, obviously solutions like AWS Outpost or Microsoft Azure Stack are gaining their momentum, but they, are st they still put uh, people inside of a, they result with a vendor lock-in. Like th this is a technology that is provided by a public cloud provider as an extension to the public cloud. It is hosted on-prem, but users cannot really take control over those uh, uh, solutions. So having a look on the remaining technologies, it is pretty evident that OpenStack, is, uh, OpenStack adoption is actually increasing and is increasing pretty stable over time. Um, why? Because OpenStack is uh, open source, uh, doesn't really uh, tie users into any kind of licenses or mandatory subscriptions, um, and they can take a control over their environment. Uh, you know, they can fully take a control over their environment. Like uh, uh, it is not something that is hosted by someone else. It, it is something that they can deploy and operate by themselves. So this is why we chose. OpenStack. And now moving to Chand OpenStack. Uh, Chand OpenStack is Canonical's uh, distribution for OpenStack. Um, uh, that uh, our goal here is to ensure the maximum CAPEX and OPEX efficiency for uh, organizations who want to use OpenStack as an extension to their existing public cloud infrastructure. So 
Having a look on this diagram, um, it represents a typical IT budget um, that, that's represented on the left here. So it consists on the, of the following pillars. Um, hardware and facilities are the investments that have to be made upfront when going with private cloud infrastructure. Obviously, you have to purchase a hardware for uh, your private cloud infrastructure. It has to be hosted somewhere in some facility. You have to put the cables, uh, switches, you know, power, uh, make it all up and running. So uh, it is one of the codes that have to be considered. Software licenses and services is the second pillar. Um, and uh, when it comes to the uh, recurring costs, so something that uh, um, recurs uh, on, on regular basis, like uh, annually, for example, um, a significant portion of this budget is really spent on internal operations and maintenance. And then, since all of those three pillars uh, put a negative impact on the organization's finances, the the only they, they cannot really afford uh, spending too much money on R and D and business transformation or change. So our goal with Charmed OpenStack, and this is what we really focus on, is to reduce those um, uh, costs that put a negative impact. Uh, so reduce the costs associated with hardware and facilities, software licenses and services, and internal operations and maintenance, so that the overall TCO is decreased, uh, but still leaving a space for an increased innovation. So that organizations can invest more in their R&D and business transformation. And we achieve that by uh, making sure that our Charmed OpenStack distribution uh, allows for better, better or optimal architecture of the cloud and optimal price, and more importantly, optimal operations, which I'm going to talk about in a few minutes. So on having a look on those three um, um, assumptions, on those three missions that we're trying to fulfill. So optimal architecture comes from the fact that uh, we provide a reference uh, architecture for private cloud implementation that ensures that um, people are, organizations are getting the uh, maximum value for money from the hardware that they buy. So hardware obviously, um, is an investment that has to be made at the beginning. It, 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 it makes a, a significant portion of the initial budget of the CAPEX, but still it is possible to, by following certain guidelines and, and best practices, to choose a hardware that provides the best value for money while not breaking the performance, while not breaking the quality. So for that, uh, our our reference architecture for private cloud implementation uh, uh, is based on performance optimized networking and performance optimized storage. Um, and in order to provide uh, the actual bill of materials, uh, we cooperate with the leading hardware vendors, including uh, you know Dell, Supermicro, Lenovo, uh, HP, and, and others that are listed here. With regards to the optimal price, it is pretty straightforward. So, you know, uh, we try to offer our solutions and services at the best possible price. Um, so, but when it comes to the optimal operations, it is actually more interesting because um, OpenStack is known to be pretty complex and there are various services that are, you know, interconnected and have to be properly configured to work with each other. So um, in order to ensure better operations for OpenStack and enable things like OpenStack upgrades in a fully automated way, for example, uh, in the heart of our offering is automation. So we put automation around not only the initial configuration of OpenStack, it's life cycle. So for example, scaling out the cluster, but also it's day-to-day -day operations such as um, baking, backing up the databases or renewing certificates, and also any form of integration tasks. So let's say if there is uh, an external LMA cluster for logging, monitoring, and uh, alerting purposes, how do I integrate my OpenStack with this kind of a cluster? Do I have to do it manually, or is it 
again, fully automated. So in our solution, all of that is fully automated, uh, which uh, allows the operations team to spend less time on operating OpenStack and, and struggling with its configuration um, and put their effort uh, more on you know, expanding the actual business value that OpenStack brings. Um, taking a deeper look into these better operations, um, optimal operations for OpenStack, they come from the fact that in our charmed OpenStack distribution, uh, all OpenStack services are driven by so-called operators. So operators is a concept that has recently been raised in the Kubernetes space as a um, pattern for pieces of software driving other software. So having an application and performing all of the operations of this application using another piece of the software and encapsulating those operations in a dedicated um, uh, software package. So um, we use this idea for Charmed OpenStack uh, a way before it became popular in the Kubernetes world. So um, our operators used to be called Charms, thus Charmed OpenStack as a name for the distribution. But we're now adopting this new terminology of operators. So you can consider Charmed OpenStack as an OpenStack deployed with operators. So again, um, all of the uh, operations uh, in our OpenStack distribution are fully automated, including its configuration, either initial configuration or post-deployment configuration, lifecycle management. So how do I upgrade my OpenStack? How do I scale it out? How do I add some more components? Daily operations, again, you know, renewing certificates or, or uh, adding a user, stuff like that. It's, it's all fully automated. And finally, integration components. And um, those, this, this integration automation also comes from the fact that uh, all of this uh, uh, architecture is based on so-called model-driven approach so that the cloud is fully abstracted from the end user and what they interact with is actually just a model that represents this cloud. So when they want to um, add some components to the cloud, they have to add them to the model. And then the rest is taken by, um, by the operators and executed in a fully automated way. If they want to run a certain action against this cloud, let's say backup the MySQL databases, Again, they interact with the model instead of interacting with the actual cloud. So the complexity with uh, OpenStack remains, but it's kind of abstracted from the end user. And what they have to deal with is rather a composition of those components uh, than the complexity uh, itself. All of that allows for smooth upgrades to new OpenStack versions, which is something that not many vendors were able to achieve where they are OpenStack distributions and uh, out of the box integration with infrastructure as code and CICD platforms, because the entire model can also be exported in a form of a YAML. So in, in fact, the entire configuration of a cloud is represented in a single YAML file. Um, now, when it comes to uh, some interesting features of uh, our uh, Charmed OpenStack distribution, uh, it is really important to think uh, about the public clouds again. So usually they provide you know, uh, enterprise features out of the box. So you know, nice dashboards, uh, LMA, high availability. So it is important to make sure that the OpenStack platform also has all of these kind of uh, uh, capabilities. So this is what we take care of um, as a part of uh, our enterprise feature. So ensuring high availability, integrated uh, LMA stack again, uh, landscape cloud management platform for managing uh, Ubuntu machines for regular software updates and security maintenance and ensuring data protection and data durability as, as, as described on the later slides. Um, one thing that's worth calling out, it's not relevant for everyone, but uh, in certain environments, performance is really important. So for example, uh, service providers using OpenStack for their uh, network function virtualization infrastructure implementation 
or in high performance computing, all of those features uh, usually matter. So we make sure that we provide um, an OpenStack private cloud that supports 100 gigabit per second networking from hypervisor to hypervisor based on the OVS hardware offloading technology and making sure that all of the regular features such as SRIOV, DPDK, CPU pinning, NUMA, huge pages, GPU pass-through and also PCI pass-through are entirely supported. Another thing that's very important for various organizations is security and compliance. So uh, how do I make sure that my uh, private cloud infrastructure is as secure as the public cloud ones? And don't get confused here. Uh, public clouds are now considered less secure than public clouds, according to various research topics, because uh, a lot of the uh, data leakage happens most of the data leakage events happens in private cloud, actually, not in public clouds. So um, first of all, uh, we ensure that our OpenStack platform is uh, supported with uh, regular security updates for at least 10 years uh, with our extended security maintenance program that's available for the enterprise customers, ensuring data encryption on the fly with uh, TLS and at rest using um, Ceph building technologies. Ceph is our uh, platform for software defined storage that's used in this uh, model. Ensuring operating system and OpenStack hardening, running all of the workloads, all, all of the uh, control plane workloads inside of the uh, separate machine containers for better resource isolation, and um, providing kernel live patch service that allows to update the kernel of the underlying operating system without rebooting uh, um, the hypervisor. And finally, um, uh, ensuring interoperability again. So um, there are no, there is no one OpenStack architecture that serves all kinds of use cases. So uh, we, there are actually uh, two choices that we uh, consider available, either a hyper-converged architecture where all of the compute network, storage, and control services are shared across all of the nodes in a cloud or some custom architecture according to various organizations' uh, requirements. Um, all of that runs on a certified hardware. Um, again, we cooperate with leading uh, independent hardware vendors uh, to, to make sure interoperability of the platform across various hardware. Um, and when it comes to integration with various SDN platforms and storage solutions, this is also available. Uh, what's available out of the box uh, in Chant OpenStack is OVM, um, is the open source software defined networking, but uh, solutions like uh, Juniper Contrail and Cisco ACI are supported as well. And when it comes to the storage, we use Ceph. Um, by default uh, as the software defined storage game, but uh, there is there's a possibility to integrate Chant OpenStack with any other kind of uh, platform as well. Um, another interesting feature uh, that uh, people usually forget to think about is how do I uh, ensure disaster recovery uh, of my cloud. So obviously on the infra level, uh, it is achieved by using uh, building OpenStack technologies such as uh, multi-region setup, for example, right? Uh, but on the tenant level, uh, OpenStack is really missing this kind of a feature. So we cooperate with, with a leader in this field, which is Trilio, to ensure that our charmed OpenStack uh, distribution can be easily extended with uh, Trilio Vort for OpenStack that ensures native integration with OpenStack Cloud and, and tenant level backups for the instances running on top of OpenStack. And again, uh, thanks to all of the automation around Charmed OpenStack and uh, fully automated integration, Trilio Vault can be added to the OpenStack Cloud by just interacting with a model and uh, all of the operations happen in a fully automated way in the background. 
And last thing about chart OpenStack, uh, stability. So uh, since uh, OpenStack and Ubuntu releases are tied and uh, Ubuntu is released in uh, six month development cycles. So every six months, there is a new version of Ubuntu. Also every six months, there is a new version of chart OpenStack that's available. And uh, versions that come um, uh, with uh, Ubuntu LTS versions, so long-term supported versions of Ubuntu, are supported by Canonical for five years with an additional 10 years of security updates uh, to make our LTS OpenStack, LTS Charmed OpenStack, um, uh, a, a stable and secure platform for organizations who don't want to upgrade uh, but want to stay with a certain version for a longer period of time. And finally, uh, I know we're, I'm reaching the end of my time, so very quickly about the edge. So um, what about the edge actually, right? So uh, let's say we already use OpenStack in our data center and uh, are actually considering using OpenStack at the edge. Edge is a very important topic because it's going to be bigger than public clouds. Uh, thus, it is important to make sure that uh, we have right tools in our hands to be able to run our workloads on the edge soon when um, edge is going to become more and more popular. So what does it mean to, to, to us? So with the centralized approach, all of the workloads were running in a single data center while with the edge, they are going to be distributed around and at the end of the day, we're going to have more and more edge sites than the data center side. So how do we deal with that? Is OpenStack a right choice for this kind of a use case? Um, yes, so basically we, we shall start with describing the edge uh, and, and what the edge actually means for us. So if we move from the left to the right, we started with the public clouds, then we move to the private cloud uh, for ensuring maximum CapEx and OpEx efficiency with, with OpenStack. Now we're moving out from the data center closer to the actual user. So there, there's going to be two stages. There's going to be a near edge where we could see micro clouds as a solution for, for this kind of a use case, sorry. And there would be the actual internet of things. So single appliances distributed around the world, right? Um, so if you think about this micro cloud approach, uh, is OpenStack a right fit for the micro cloud? Let's say there is an edge site with just uh, a limited uh, resources. Uh, it can be free servers for high availability. Is OpenStack suitable solution for this, 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 this kind of an infrastructure? Or maybe we shall look gates, maybe we shall look something gates, something else, right? Um, so for this kind of a use case, MicroStack, um, is our solution. So MicroStack is another distribution of OpenStack that is being developed and uh, maintained by Canonical. And uh, this is an OpenStack in a snap. If, if you know snaps, snap is an universal Linux package that puts together the application with all of its dependencies and makes it available as a single package that can be installed across uh, many Linux distributions. So MicroStack is OpenStack packaged inside of a single snap. So you can install it with a single command. It's snap install MicroStack with the switches listed on the screen here. Um, and there is just another another command to in initialize it uh, so that you know all of the databases are populated and services are being started. So if you are looking for, if you are interested in OpenStack and if you're looking for a solution either for your edge or just to get started with OpenStack. Uh, this is something that can be installed on your workstation with just these minimal two commands. So you can start your OpenStack journey by just installing MicroStack and experimenting with it. Um, and finally, a question. So I talked about two solutions. I talked about Charmed OpenStack and MicroStack. So what's actually the difference? Um, so MicroStack, as I said, is kind of an OpenStack on Rails solution. You get OpenStack without all of its complexity, without all of its 
services, configuration files, processes, you don't have to deal with that. You just get OpenStack that straightforward, lightweight, and also opinionated. While Charmed OpenStack is uh, kind of a composable OpenStack solution that is based on operators that is more suitable for large scale deployments in a data center when you're running uh, tens or hundreds of hypervisors and you need a private cloud solution, Charmed OpenStack is a better uh, answer for that. Also ensuring uh, configurability and lifecycle management. And that's actually pretty much what I prepared for today. Uh, so I'm not sure how much time do we have for questions. Uh, so back to this you, Baba. Wonderful one. Uh, by the way, yesterday I ran a small workshop where I taught our viewers about MicroStack. So it took us around 10 minutes to set up the whole MicroStack cloud in, in a machine. So it was a fantastic, so lovely product lovely lovely fantastic product so so i must say that you're doing remarkable work in 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 this cloud area i would like to invite hisham as well this was brilliant absolutely brilliant a uh, lot of engagement a lot of excitement and uh, for everybody who's watching the stream right now just so that you know this video will stay on YouTube channel and you can always watch it again to get a better understanding. Uh, OpenStack cloud, this is what the future is. And that's what everybody needs to learn, get knowledge about. And then perhaps uh, if you are pursuing for a startup, if you're pursuing for a big uh, company, maybe if you want to build your own Facebook or some or anything in the future, uh, you know, uh, that's that's uh, something you really need to put your hands on. Uh, Babar, you will uh, read this question from Dr. Lutfullah Kakakhil, who's another trainer, a respected instructor. Would you please read this comment? Yeah, yeah, Titus, there is a question from our senior Dr. Lutfullah Kakakhil. He's a PhD mm -hmm. himself. He's doing a lot of things with Raspberry Pi. So he's asking, is MicroStack available for Raspberry Pi? Can we cluster Raspberry Pis for full OpenStack? That's a very uh, intriguing question because uh, we have recently announced uh, full support of uh, Ubuntu desktop for Raspberry Pi. So obviously the use, case for, the use cases for Raspberry Pi are going to become more and more popular. Uh, I need to admit we haven't tested MicroStack on Raspberry Pi yet, but uh, I don't think there's anything blocking us from doing that. So it's actually a very interesting use case to try in the future. Yeah, I, I must say that Dr. Lutfullah Kakakhel is the person who can help you by testing these things because he has a good hands on in Raspberry Pi stuff. He are using he's using Raspberry Pi since ages. So he's the guy wherever we feel that we find some issues in Raspberry Pi, we'll ask him. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> so Raspberry Pi Pro. He is Raspberry Pi Pro. And, uh, and you know, but Titus, this was a wonderful presentation. Uh, the, the comments are coming in. Can somebody yeah. uh, print, the, uh, print the comment of Tariq Rahman where he says, wonderful presentation, even for non techies yeah. like me. Now, that says a lot about what you have done here. And uh, look, do we have a privilege <laughs> uh, to, to, to request you to come back again, perhaps for a, another workshop, if time permits, uh, get, you know, based on your schedule? Because people have actually acknowledged uh, uh, your, your, your easy to teach teaching method. So if that's something you probably could do for us, maybe a hands down training, um, you know, we'll be more than happy to have you back again, Titus. For sure, yeah. uh, we can definitely coordinate for for something like that and and see how it goes. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll send you one request again for 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 next coming weeks. Uh, by the way, uh, you also mentioned Trilio over here as a backup solution for OpenStack. So after this presentation, we have another presentation, and after that, 
John from, from Trilio is also going to talk about backup solutions for OpenStack and Kubernetes.